comic actress Tiffany Haddish receives this year's Trailblazer Award. I started doing stand-up comedy in 1997 because my social worker gave me two choices. I can go to the comedy camp or I can go to psychiatric therapy. I chose the comedy camp. And now I'm still in psychiatric therapy, but that's another situation. The U.S. Postal Service unveils the official 2020 Black Heritage Month stamp. On it is the late political TV journalist Gwen Ifill. And on this crucial presidential as well as local election year, the event was also an opportunity to urge African Americans to get out and vote. As homelessness, hunger, and incarceration continue to disproportionately affect black Americans, this year's Hall of Fame recipients are calling for change. Because you cannot create a healing presence in our community if you lose the capacity to believe that our people can elevate themselves to rightful places of rulership and mastery over their circumstance. But this recognition is not just for me, it's for uh, all of us who are doing the work. And what I will do is continue to work as hard as I can to make a difference. Thank you so much. Councilmember Curran Price is hard at work on the homeless crisis in Council District 9. I was there for a first look at construction on a new bridge housing project called Bringing Hope to Hope Street. On this day, construction crews were hard at work. They were building what is called the Bringing Hope to Hope Street bridge housing project. Until now, many living near the Hope Street location had all but lost hope. Thousands are in dire need of shelter. Encampments can be seen on many streets. It's heartbreaking, and so we've got to do a better job in making sure that services are available. LA City Council member Curran Price represents the area. He says this new bridge housing project is part of the solution. Well, it's significant because we've got to get people off the streets. We have to certainly provide housing and we have to provide services, and we have to get folks off the streets. The temporary housing will have room for 100 people, but besides shelter and food, the residents will also get support from community outreach professionals. They will offer them a wide array of social services. From as simple as barber services and clothing exchanges, all the way through employment services. In fact, we have an employment program that trains individuals for the California Guard card and it guarantees a job afterwards. Social workers are now busy deciding who will be able to move in first. Hundreds of others are expected to be put on a waiting list. The bridge housing is designed to support residents for about 90 days. After that, the goal is to place them in permanent, affordable housing units. People who live and work in this underserved community are happy to see the emergency housing being built here. It's great that they're doing something. Finally, someone's doing something about it, helping any, anyone out in the community. It's, it's amazing. It's really true. It's going to help out a lot and make a difference in the community. Because this neighborhood has so many residents experiencing homelessness, the Bringing Hope to Hope Street facility is just the beginning. Many more similar projects are already in the works. This is a project that is needed all over Los Angeles. Council member Mitch O'Farrell recently presided over the annual State of Hollywood event. His speech detailed a rich present and a brighter future for both visitors and residents of Tinseltown. One of the things that I enjoy most about the annual State of Hollywood event is that it gives me an opportunity in the new year to reflect on what is working well, what could be working better, and how, can, how we can refine our approach to problem solving. Since first being elected in 2013, I've been very clear on what my objectives are for Hollywood. Quality of life, making sure new projects exemplify quality design and architecture, historic preservation, and housing affordability. 20% of housing in Hollywood is under some form of rent control or rent covenant affordable housing. That's a really great statistic that we can all be proud of. 
Hollywood is a very interesting and thriving community that has an outsized presence in the Los Angeles economy in terms of the economic growth, uh, the investment that's here, uh, and the attention it gets because we are Hollywood, the only place in the world where other, other cities try to replicate and celebrate our brand, but we are the brand here. When Mitch was uh, speaking about the new projects, the percentages of new jobs being brought into the community, I mean, it's not just talk. If you're here in Hollywood, you can see this. It's really happening. In fact, it has happened. May the magic of Hollywood keep us all under its spell. And may the allure of this community continue to cultivate dreamers and doers. Thank you. And in downtown Los Angeles, plans are in the works to revitalize another SoCal landmark. Council member Jose Huizar was on hand to introduce the redesign of Pershing Square. Take a look. Today we're here to celebrate the announcement about phase one construction that will be starting at the end of 2020 here. And what that's going to do is remove the barrier walls into Pershing Square along Olive. And it's also going to plant over 20 trees. And the best part is when you come down Olive now, you're going to see into this park. And then following that, we're going to do phase two, which will be along Hill Street. And once again, we'll remove the barriers, the tower, and we'll have this openness. To be here today, it's really exciting, but not only for me and my staff, but also all of downtown Los Angeles. It's been anticipated for quite a while for us to be here. And really the last year or two, we had a very difficult decision to make, which is we don't have all the money right now, so we really can't implement this whole plan in its entirety and begin construction on it. While it's a 10-year plan to implement the four phases, but if we phase it over 10 years, we will be guaranteed that we have the money and let's get on that path and start construction. There's a lot of programming that happens here at Pershing Square, so imagine you know, that programming being expanded now and having more programs and more art and more culture and more music and, you know, just more, more events happening here. So this, these improvements will allow us to do that. What's the best way to instill civic values? Get them while they're young. That was the goal for Secretary of State Alex Padilla and L.A. City Clerk Holly Wolcott. They visited John F. Kennedy High School in Granada Hills to encourage students to get out the vote. I think what a lot of people don't know is, well, why should I vote or why should I care about the local elections? But the funding decisions that are made every day about, say, street pavement, different issues that impact you locally, those decisions are made by your city council or your school board members. So it's important to do the research and know which candidate locally that you would like to vote for. It was a warm welcome for Secretary of State Alex Padilla, who recently visited John F. Kennedy High School to encourage young junior and senior high school students to pre-register to vote. If you're wondering why the politicians don't hear us, well, it's because you're not speaking up, because you're not voting, and that's why we're here. Not just to give you the information about why it's important and how to do it, but to provide you this opportunity. If you look at the numbers, if we look at voter turnout statistics and registration statistics, they represent the biggest voting block in America. But they're the ones that register and vote at the lowest rate. So, you know, we're just driven by the data. This is where we can do more and need to do more to increase registration and turnout rates. It's very important. You need to bring a lot of attention to it. And the more attention that you bring to it, the better, in my opinion. He's encouraging all eligible 16 and 17 year olds to pre-register to vote. Once pre-registered, their voter registration will automatically activate when these teens turn 18. And at this assembly, there was no excuse not to sign up. In 2016, Secretary Padilla launched a high school civic engagement portal where students can learn more about pre-registration, how to become a student poll worker, and much more. Over 400,000 young people have already pre-registered throughout the state of California. And after this assembly, it's anticipated that number will go up. 
it's inspiring to students that may come from Hispanic backgrounds to see, you know, a, a Hispanic leader that has done well. And I think that that is important to events like this. The changes to how we vote in 2020 are substantial, and I'll have more on that with LA City Clerk Holly Walcott later in the program. The LA Public Library offers a reward for scribes. LA Sanitation Department is collecting blanket donations, and Council Member Mike Bonin wants rent control on the November ballot. All this next on City Beat. The rising price of rent is an ongoing concern for tenants throughout Los Angeles. Councilmember Mike Bonin was among the supporters of a ballot measure that will allow an expansion of rent control. The uh, initiative to give cities more ability to do rent control has qualified for the November ballot and to try to start spreading the word to voters around the state that this is something that we need. 50 years ago, the sculpture called Well of the Scribes disappeared from the Los Angeles Central Library. Today, there's a reward up to $10,000 offered to anyone with information leading to the recovery of sections of the lost artifact. The weather in LA has been on the cold side, and in an effort to help the city's unsheltered residents, the LA Sanitation and Environment Department is collecting new and gently used blankets and sleeping bags to help people stay warm. For information, contact the City Facilities Recycling Program at san.cfrp at lacity.org. Style and performance, that was on display from these movie stars in the Oscar-nominated film Ford v Ferrari. No, we're not talking about the actors, we're talking about the cars. Go Like Hell came out in uh, 2009 originally, and for all of these years, and now with the movie, it's just it's a it's a celebration of the greatest sporting rivalry in history, and um, and it brings all the passionate people together to celebrate both sides, Ford and Ferrari. There's a lot more Ford here than Ferrari, but it's just terrific because there's so much passion for these brands, and there's so much passion for that story still after all these years. You have million-dollar cars here. You have movie cars here. You have classic cars here. You don't see these cars on the street. And for cars and car enthusiasts, it gives them a chance and an opportunity to see cars that people in, say, Nebraska wouldn't be able to see. You know, we're fortunate that the Peterson, Peterson Museum has this event here, and we're local, that we can actually see these cars. And the fascination, I guess, is, is the history behind it, right? Of where uh, Carroll Shelby started, right? A normal person like you and I, like everybody else, that made a name for himself, right? And the significance of, uh, of building something for themselves, right? And so it's, it's, it's the heritage that makes this really important. Yeah, my father was in the movie uh, Ford versus Ferrari. Mm -hmm. Portrayed, uh, his name was Ken Miles, portrayed by Christian Bale. Okay. And so it's just a story basically of the development of the Cobras and Ford GTs and the friendship. More is more about a friendship between my father and Shelby. The, le the Shelby legacy is incredible. It's amazing. You know, he launched his Cobra. I don't know how. You know, in 1962. All of these years, you go around all over the country, all over the world. People are just so insanely passionate for Shelby cars, for the Shelby logo. Uh, after all these years, people just love these Mustangs and they love these Cobras. We go from the speedway to the runway, where the competition in design excellence is fierce. The Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising has launched its annual Art of Motion Picture Costume Design Exhibit. Check out these amazing costumes. We are here at the 28th Annual Art of Motion Picture Costume Design Exhibition, and we this is a, a costume tribute fabulousness right here. We've got over a hundred costumes from 30 different films, including the five that are nominated for best costume design for the Oscars. We're so excited to have all five here. Just to the last minute, last week, we got a tie that was from Mr. Rogers. 
his widow, sent it to us to put on display with our one Mr. Rogers costume. Of course, this museum is great for anybody who likes movies. You know, so if you're a fan of the movies, you're a fan of Hollywood, and you want to come here and you can get a little bit closer to those favorite actors of yours or that movie that you really like. But we're here at a university. FIDM is a college. And of course, instructors can bring their students here. That is the beauty of it. How amazing is that those students can come here and look up close to Academy Award nominated costumes, as well as other costumes, actual costumes. I mean, that's a once in a lifetime experience. They can just come here, come here, sketch, take pictures, take Insta stories, do whatever you want to do, but don't touch them. And the best part, are you waiting? It's free. <laughs> that's the best part. It's open to the public and it's free. And we love that. So don't miss it. Were you able to spot your favorite movie costume? I'm rooting for the one with the red feathers. Mayor Eric Garcetti joined LAPD Chief Michael Moore and hundreds of Happy Angelinos for a Chinatown tradition, the 121st Golden Dragon Parade. at the annual Chinese New Year Parade, and we are having a great time. Gong He Pa Choi, and may it be a year of goodness and prosperity and health and peace for all. It's a great opportunity to really see the community, all of Los Angeles come out and celebrate the Chinese culture, the history, and, and the inclusion here in, in not just Los Angeles, but America. Proud day, it's great to be here. So I see you a dollar in your hand. What does that mean? I'm supposed to give to the lions, supposed to um, give them good luck for the new year. And for Los Angeles to be out here celebrating one of the best traditions anywhere in Los Angeles. And it's important after this week especially, and everything that happened with Kobe for us to be out here and to say we are strong, we are standing tall, and we're going to continue his legacy. I don't know if I would feed the dragon, but is it still good luck if you just hand the dragon a dollar? I'll get back to you on that one. Cultural and community pride flooded into the streets of Lamert Park during their monthly art walk. The street fair is how this neighborhood celebrates African-American heritage year round. The Art Walk benefits community because it gives us a platform to showcase our art. Also, it gives us something like positive, constructive, and something to be proud about. I think the Art Walk is very inspirational and it brings uh, not only their community together, but us as well. It educates them on African culture. It also preserves the history of African Americans' contribution to this community. It also is a place where we can gather, where we can dance, where we can sing, where we can be African American. It's always been a really diverse community. Um, it's been a stronghold for the African American community for over 30 years. Uh, the drum circle happens, and music has always been a good way to bring different communities and different ethnicities together.
I did not have shoes. When I left, I just left and left everything. So he, they're giving me back. They give me back things I don't have. Make you feel warm inside. I'm a person that loves to give it. Even if somebody needs what I have in my bag, I will give it, give it away. Because they need it more than I need it. I'm still going to survive. The world is filled with a lot of hate that we don't need. Um, and so just embodying love is the most important thing that we can do right now. We just believe that where policy and politics fall short, that there are human solutions. And those solutions are rooted in love and friendship. And it sounds utopian, but it's not. It's very simple. At the end of the day, it's about seeing people for who they are and seeing and recognizing every single person's potential and that everybody has a place in our society and that nobody should be forgotten or left out. Our feature this week is all about the 2020 ballot changes, changes that were made in an effort to make voting easier and more accessible for all voters. I had the privilege of sitting down with Los Angeles City Clerk Holly Wolcott to get a first-hand tutorial. It was really informative stuff. Take a look. The March 2020 primary marks the beginning of some big changes in the voting process in Los Angeles. Not only will there be different polling places for many Angelinos, but the ballots will also be marked in a brand new way using the latest technology. Our polling places are about to change the locations where we cast our ballots. So tell us what we're in for. The previous precinct model is going away. We will now have what is called voting centers. The idea is that you can go to any one of those vote centers. So instead of just the precinct closest to your house, you can go to any voting center that's most convenient to you, whether it's near your home, near your work, near a park. Each location will be open for up to 11 days before the actual primary. Look it up online at lavote.net. They do have a vote center locator that's already live and you can find the vote center that's most convenient for you to vote at. Now, how does this new system address the needs of those with disabilities? The idea was to go into different communities and take care of everybody's needs, to be as inclusive as possible. So the wheelchair accessible, making sure that the size and shape of the ballot marking device would accommodate wheelchairs for the hearing or the sight impaired that they can plug in and, all, and use just the same system as everybody else to vote. And the same thing with, with the language. If you want to pick one of the 12 different languages, you just pick that language on the screen. This is the county's new ballot marking device that will be in use for the March primary. And it says, touch the circle to start. Now it asks us to insert our ballot. Now it says, that the ballot has been loaded. Now it gives us a chance to vote for one, and it tells us that this is for the city local mayor. So it gives us these four choices, or we can hit more, and there are some other choices. So we are going to hit this one, and hit next. Now it's gonna allow us to review. Hit next, and it says, yes, I'm ready to print gives you the opportunity to go back one more time and check that each one of these races was what you wanted. After you've checked to make sure your choices are correct, then you feed it back into the system. Okay, I'll let you do that. And your ballot has been cast. That simple. Take in a concert at Union Station. Attend a free ladies book swap and Mardi Gras at the beach. All this in Things to Do. Metro Art Los Angeles invites you to the first official Rush Hour concert of the year. Be there for a live performance by The Sinseers in the Union Station's waiting room. The Sinseers play a blend of 1960s soul and R&B cultivated in their hometown of East Los Angeles. Don't miss Metro Art Presents The Sinseers, Thursday, February 13th, beginning at 4 p.m. For details, visit unionstationla.com. Join Asha Grant, director of the Free Black Women's Library for free book swap and art workshop. 
Spend an afternoon of literature and art centered on the exploration of radical feminism and reclamation of the black female body. It's an event for all ages and capabilities. The free Black Woman's Library Book Swap and Art Workshop happens Saturday, February 15th. Register for this free event on Eventbrite. Hello, party peeps. It's time for the 19th Annual Venice Beach Mardi Gras Parade. Ready to get your crazy on? Great, because it's Mardi Gras time. So put on something zany and mosey the whole family down to Venice Beach. Enjoy the parade and stay for the party afterwards. The 19th Annual Venice Beach Mardi Gras Parade starts at Beach and Rose Avenues. The fun happens Saturday, February 15th, beginning at 12 noon. And that's a look at some things to do. That's it for this edition. I'm Saida Pagan. From all of us here at LA This Week, thanks for joining us. A reminder that you can catch us online at lacityview.org. We're also on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. See you next time for more LA This Week.
Good morning and welcome to the Los Angeles City Council. Today is Tuesday, February 11th, and this council meets every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. Madam Clerk, we have a quorum. Let's run through the agenda. Blumenfield, Bonin, Buscaino, Cedillo, Harris, Dawson, Weezer, Kretz, Krikorian, Lee, Martinez, O'Farrell, Price, Rodriguez, Rue, Wesson, 10 members present and a quorum, Madam President. First order of business. Approval of the minutes. Okay, Council Member Blumenfield moves and Mr. Weezer seconds next. Commendatory resolutions for approval. Mr. Price moves and Mr. Harris Dawson seconds next. Madam President, today is Tuesday and time for the flag salute. Mr. Blumenfield, will you lead us in our flag salute, sir? Yes, thank you. If everyone could rise, place your right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bloomfield. Madam Clerk, what's next? Items 1 through 17 are items noticed for public hearing. Madam President, there are cards on 14 through 17. Okay, members, are there any specials on these items? Seeing none, on the remaining balance, let's go ahead and open the roll. Close the roll and tabulate the votes. 11 ayes. Next. Um, Madam President, for the record, the ordinances for items 1 through 8 will carry over to uh, February 18, 2020, unless reconsidered with 12 members present. And next section are items 18 through 28, and those are items which public hearings have been held. Members, are there any specials on any of these items? Okay, seeing none, let's go ahead and open the roll. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. What's next? Madam President, for the record, the ordinances for 18 through 21 will carry over to February 18, 2020, unless reconsidered with 12 members present. And Madam President, there is a request for item 22, 23 to go forthwith. Okay, without objection, that would be the order next. Items 29 through uh, 37 are items which public hearings have not been held. Ten votes are required for consideration. So without objection, those items are not before us. Are there any cards on any of these items? Yes, Madam President. There are cards on 29 through 37. So they should be held on the desk. Great. Members, are there any specials on any of these items? Madam President, that takes council to presentations, item called special or general public comment. Let's move on to our presentations this morning. Mr. Harris Dawson. Good morning, colleagues. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'll ask our uh, guests and honorees to join us uh, here at the stage so that you're on the, the big screen. Come on up, Isaac. <laughs> You don't want to uh, miss your close-up. Uh, today I'm uh, proud as a part of our uh, presentations and celebration of African American Heritage Month here in the city of Los Angeles. We want to recognize the Ralph J. Bunch Center at uh, our beloved University of California at Los Angeles. Um, the Bunch Center was established in 1969. This is uh, its 51st uh, year of existence and of course it's named after Los Angeles' own Ralph Bunch, uh, who was born and, and raised in the New Ninth District uh, and attended Jefferson High School, went on to win a Nobel Peace Prize and serve our nation uh, as a diplomat and a negotiator. The Ralph Bunch Center is uh, one of our important academic institutions in this city. They not only shine a light on our public policy uh, and our economy and the, its impacts on African Americans, uh, they also provide a spotlight 
on what cities are doing all over the world. And so I'm proud today to be joined uh, by folks uh, from the Bunt Center. We're here with the leader of the Bunt Center, Kelly Lytle Hernandez. She's a professor of history and African American studies and urban uh, planning. Uh, she's written a bunch and won a bunch of awards. Uh, most notably, their work uh, that I think all of us who make policy should pay attention, their million dollar hoods work where they looked at the amount that we spend as a city and a county and a state on incarceration and suppression in specific census tracts versus what we could gain if we reinvested those resources in the communities and in the people that live in those census tracts. And so they studied my district and districts all over uh, the city. And so I want to uh, present to you and uh, recognize on behalf of our city council, Dr. Lytle Hernandez. Good morning, thank you very much for this recognition. At the Ralph J. Bunch Center for African American Studies, we're committed to studying black life and improving the conditions of black life and working with our leaders here on the ground and social movements in city council, on the board of supervisors, to make sure that we're advancing policies that improve black life and through black life, all life here in the city and county of Los Angeles. So of course we are home to the Million Dollar Hoods project which maps how much we're spending on incarceration per neighborhood here in Los Angeles. I encourage you to check it out, to think through how we can remove resources from policing incarceration and move it into what we need to create thriving, healthier communities, education, housing, um, employment, and so on. So we're very honored to be here today. Thank you very much for this recognition. Um, I reach out to each of you. We are certainly here in Los Angeles um, based at the primary public institution of the city and the county. We regard ourselves as a think tank for you and to, as a resource to each of you. So thank you very much. So on behalf of the, the city council, we've got a, a big uh, cert for you to put. I think uh, we might have a speaker on the queue, yes. Yes, we do, Mr. Price. Uh, Councilman, uh, thank you for bringing uh, our UCLA friends uh, to, uh, to Chambers today. And you are right, uh, there's certainly a long history, a legacy of Ralph Bunch in the 9th District. Uh, his residence, one of his residences there, we certainly celebrate him there, the, his, his achievements certainly at Jefferson High. Uh, but the work that, the, that the Institute does now has been groundbreaking. Again, not just for LA and our communities, uh, but nationwide and, in, and internationally. So we appreciate uh, your leadership, your presence, uh, the academic rigor, uh, and the consciousness that you bring to thought uh, as we grapple with these issues that uh, certainly are perplexing in minority communities, but impact all of our communities in ways that are important. So again, thank you. Uh, thank you for being here today. Thank you. Back to you, Mr. Aristotle. Thank you so much, Mr. Price, and thank you, members. And so on behalf of the Los Angeles City Council and our mayor, we present to you this commendation recognizing the work of the Ralph Bunch Center and your new leadership and all that you'll give to the city going forward. Thank you all so much. Thank you very much. Mr. Lee, ready for your presentation? Good morning, colleagues, Madam President. Uh, today I'm thrilled to welcome ARC's Bell and Chime Choir to City Hall and to recognize this outstanding nonprofit organization today. While this organization is actually located in Councilmember Kerkorian's uh, district, I'd like to thank him for allowing me to do this presentation. ARC, which is short for Activities, Recreation, and Care for Individuals with Developmental Disabilities, was founded because of the passion of two mothers who had daughters with Down syndrome. Mary Schallert and Dixie Hendrickson, these ladies had different personalities but both of these mothers wanted nothing more than for their daughters to grow up with their families and friends, become active members of the community, 
and lead meaningful and quality, of, uh, quality lives. If you're wondering why I am doing this presentation, because I often talk about uh, volunteering uh, when I was 13 years old, and ARC was that organization that I was so fortunate to volunteer for. Um, some of the individuals actually that are gonna be performing uh, for us, um, I spent my summers with and grew up together with. And I am so proud to be in a position uh, today to recognize the outstanding work that they, that they do. Uh, ARC has been serving individuals with developmental disabilities in Los Angeles for over 50 years. Their dedicated staff and volunteers help individuals with developmental disabilities break the cycle of isolation through programs that promote re recreation, education, and socialization. One of these programs is the ARC Handbell and Chime Choirs, which we, we, we will be hearing from shortly. This choir serves the dual purpose of serving the community through beautiful and inspirational performances, while also helping ARC members grow in their artistic expression and self-confidence. At this time, I invite you all to turn your attention to the rear of the council chambers for a special performance by ARC's Hand and Bell Chime Choirs. Colleagues, the ARC Bell and Chime Choir. I'm pleased to have with me today. Oh, one more. Oh, one more. Jay? Oh, no, no. I was going to introduce you. Okay, but I wanted to encourage okay. your audience to sing this one with okay. us. Great. Because it's so, it really will move you when you sing along. It's America the Beautiful. Just sing very slowly, go with the stick, with our tempo, and please sing along to America the Beautiful. All right, America the Beautiful, thanks. Man.
Boa tarde. Jane, can you come up in here? I'd like to introduce ARC's current director, Jane Charter, to say a few words about this organization. Oh, well, you know, like you, I walked in there as a volunteer in uh, 1991, and I have done every job, including the executive job. And no, I, now I really am doing what I love. I'm teaching the music full time. So I'm not the director, but I'm the director of the choir. I love it. It's the most amazing organization you've ever seen. The, the family support is so great. The, vault, the teenagers come with their, with their phones and their new generation, and they just fall in love with us. And it's, so it's, it's, just, it's just great. I love it. Well, Jane, I just want to thank you for advocacy and behalf on me and the City of Los Angeles and the City Council. Just want to present you and ARC with a certificate to thank you for everything that you do for oh, our community. Thank so, you, Mr. Thank Lee. you, Jane. Thank you. Mr. Lee? Mr. Lee? Mr. Lee? We have a member on the queue, Mr. Lee. Mr. Lee, can you hear me? We have a member on the queue that'd like to say a few words. <laughs> Mr. Gakori, why don't you just go ahead? Thank you very much. Mr. Lee thank is you, not Madam President. And thank you, Mr. Lee. Uh, very much appreciate that you've brought ARC uh, before us today, uh, both to be honored uh, and to inspire us with uh, this performance. Um, we're so proud of ARC in North Hollywood and in the Second Council District. Um, I recognize many of you because you've come and performed at, at my community holiday parties uh, multiple times, and so it's, it's great to see you again. And I, I just um, think that it's so important that we recognize, as Mr. Lee has, how important uh, volunteering for community organizations is, how transformative it is. Mr. Lee started volunteering for ARC as a teenager, and look where he's come uh, as a result of that initial taste of, of serving others. And the history of ARC is, is really illustrative of that, too. Um, it was a half a almost a half a century ago that two moms um, in 1969 Mary Shallard and Dixie Hendrickson started this organization, and that was a time, members, when uh, young uh, children dealing with Down syndrome did not have the resources that they have now. Uh, they, it, families were not treated uh, the way they are now, and these moms fought for everything they could fight for, for their families, for their kids, and it was an outgrowth of that that fight, that struggle, that we got this incredible organization that continues to serve uh, people uh, who are uh, experiencing developmental disabilities throughout their lives. And um, it's a great opportunity to help them to um, uh, both to develop their self-esteem, to be part of their community, to express uh, their artistry and their creativity, uh, but it's also an important uh, vehicle through which the entire community uh, can lift up one another. 350 volunteers a year uh, through ARC get involved in helping others uh, who are experiencing developmental dis disabilities. And so I, I couldn't be more pleased to recognize the incredible work that they do, uh, their incredible artistry, uh, and also the tremendous volunteers who make such a, a great difference for so many families in our district and throughout the San Fernando Valley. So thank you all very much for being here, and congratulations again. With a round of applause. For Thank you, Mr. Lee. That was great. Thank you very much for being here. Bye. Okay, members, let's go ahead and vote on the ordinances and let's vote on reconsiderations of item one through eight. Let's open the row, close the row, and tabulate the vote. Those items are now before us. 13, oh, I'm sorry, that's 13 eyes. Okay, those items are now before us. Let's open the row. Close the row and tabulate the vote. 13, 13 ayes. Okay, now let's vote on the um, ordinances 18 through 21. Let's vote on reconsideration. Let's open the row. 
Close the row and tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Those items are now before us, members. Let's open the row. Close the row, close the row and tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Okay, Madam Clerk, let's go on to multiple speakers. Dan, are you going to speak? I know you're speaking on items 29 through 37 in your general public comment. You're not going to speak on any of the items? Okay, great. Uh, Go that, ahead. that was amazing. Yeah, that was great. Uh, uh, I have minute. never been brought to tears in my life in this building. Wow, that was amazing. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, wow. Um, Los Angeles, I have a new column today in City Watch LA entitled How Herb Wesson Cheated LA. It talks about how he falsified his residency three times when he first ran for city council in 2005. I would encourage the voters of the second county district who are going to choose a new supervisor to read my column in City Watch LA today called How Herb Wesson Cheated Los Angeles Part 1 because Part 2 is going to be very revealing. Part 1 also talked about how your former council floor director uh, allegedly committed up to 23 counts of voter fraud himself, Justin Wesson. How come people get away with voter fraud if they work in city council chambers? Again, that's it. I yield back the rest of my time. That was a great presentation. Next speaker, Arnold Sachs. Mr. Sachs, you're speaking on item 14, 29 through 32, 36, and 37 in your general public comment. Uh, Madam Chair, I also signed up for 27, and I signed up for 9 through 15, but that's a different story. Anyway, uh, on your hearing protests against the proposed improvement and maintenance of lighting districts, it includes an administrative code and a government code and I'm wondering, um, the difference between the two may be explained to the public, the general public, just as a matter of courtesy. Um, item 27 refers to MICLA, the municipal, um, municipal. So, Mr. Sachs, we actually already adopted item 27. It's not I'm sorry? Pub comp. We've already done item 27, it's been voted on. No, 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 it, it, it was, uh, it was uh, one of the items I signed up for, it Mr. City Attorney. The, the public comment was satisfied, sir. Uh, okay. So we have uh, REAP items, which are rent escrow account program. And you could use MICLA funds, which are the Municipal Improvement Corporation funds. And why do we have a corporation funds in the city that are going unused when the public could use them to rehabilitate these apartments and you would be doing an orderly bit of work instead of fighting against loggerheads because you could use that money and you could pay it back through rent to the corporation and improve homes instead of having people get fined and not have anything done. It would be a good idea to look into those MICLA funds. And um, where are we now? Uh, let's see. Uh, you know, a three-legged table, a three-legged a three-legged card table, is not worth as much as one with four legs. No matter what a card dealer sells you. So anyway, I actually started coming here. There's a free job fair. So have, have you up. moved on to your general public comment? Now, right? No, you were on the items. Do you want oh, to go to your general comment? You want to move on to your general public items, comment? We can go ahead and do that. Mr. Public comment? Uh, do you Mr. Want to Sachs, go if you want your general public comment, we can do that. Well, you get three minutes for general uh, for items. You get three agenda. minutes for the items that you signed up for, and you were off topic. 
No, 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 no. It used to get two minutes. So they changed the laws again. They changed the rules. Anyway. Same rules, sir. You have your one minute. So there's a job comment. fair coming up. Another job fair, which is one of the reasons I started coming. I started coming to these meetings because I was very upset with um, access services. It seems that it's a great program, but it's limited because people that need the program <coughs> get screwed out of it because the companies that are authorized to run the program authorize it through the number of vehicles they have but not drivers. And so the program is predicated on the number of drivers. Less drivers means less service, no matter how many vehicles you have. And so the public gets screwed on it. So I'm always looking out for more jobs. I don't know what the city council is doing. Okay, next speaker, Eric Previn. Adams, you're speaking on is 14 through 17, 32, 35, and 36 in your general public comment. How touching to have that uh, that Bell presentation. I just uh, I just want to emphasize that when we first had them to the Studio City. Uh, so wh why don't we take why don't we take that up in your general public comment and start with the agenda items you signed up for? Thanks, Mr. President. Put on the microphone. D don't do that, sir. I'm talking about these lovely. Okay, people you're off topic, Mr. Previn. Giving a brief one-second introduction. Mr. Previn, get on to topic, or I'm going to have you go to your general public comment. Something that when we do investment reports here at the City of LA, let's scan them so we're not investing with Philip Morris. Okay? If we're going to pontificate about vaping and all these other activities, let's not take our money while we're taking our Wells Fargo banking. Thank you, by the way, for all that great work, Bloomingfield, and handing it to Bank of America and Chase B, J P Morgan, which is like a redundancy. Look that one up, sir. It's a redundancy. It means we're going to be paid fees all over the place, and we have to add additional Office of Finance staff. I'm not sure what item you're on. Would you please connect it up so that it's clear? Is not on the agenda for speaking today. So I'm you know it's not on the that. agenda because I public that. comment has been satisfied. I think if you don't get back Mr. on the topics, so I'm going to go ahead and give you your one minute and you can sit down. I think that you should be punitive, and I would like to talk about the easements, which are on the agenda and are totally clear. Okay, easements is when, and Martinez certainly knows, there's a little bit of property. Sometimes we do vacations, sometimes we do other things. And what we do is we make them available to individuals uh, who are interested for a small nominal fee. Some of the fees are bigger. So you look at a $15,000, sometimes you see a larger uh, six-figure kind of fee to get these things rolling, because it depends on the size of the easement or the vacation. Now, in this case today, we have two. Fobel's going to look them up now. And we had one in my district recently, which has resulted in big questions about what could we be vacating city property for, and it is a big amorphous, it's kind of like a large structure that nobody knows what is going on. And I think that's one of the reasons why they restated their MICLA bylaws because for years they were not following the Brown Act and now they're restating that they will follow the Brown Act. So they were probably sued. That's why item 27 they don't want me to talk about, for the record. Now, I'd just like to say thank Koretz. He's here finally. He's a little sleepy though. Sir, try to stay with us. Uh, Pick Pico. This is a delightful event. It's a fair on the street. Uh, something like Taste of Soul. And we're wondering, because there's no financial attachment, it's like the, I would call it like a, haiku of item. There's no information other than let's put them on the list of city uh, funded events. And then when you look at the event which is coming up, they have a nice feature of Coretz and Fuhr who are holding linking arms and getting ready for the annual event. I love these events, frankly. Taste of Soul was terrific. I didn't like the two $80,000 charges on a 143 item agenda at different numbers and then one of them being canceled suddenly so that a VOC could slide it through when we're not looking. I just think we should be transparent about the citywide list, which is so big. Some of the events don't happen. It's very weird. It's a very weird thing because it's like politics coming from, it's like Bonin sending out emails, not from his- Can you give him his one minute of general public comment? Yeah, I'll do the general public comment. Election time is so exciting because we have opportunities to try the new voting system, to test out the various imperfections and all that, and to re-elect everyone out is one of our mottos. In, in connection with that, our neighborhood council has been the leader at having open forums, not the kind where it's rigid and you have to submit questions. And so I would ask Kerkorian, who's engaged with Sharon So about a Vox performance, to just consider later when he sees this on a recording that 
We would love to have him come talk to the rivals in our district, which include, not rivals, you know, it's a dialogue, Ayindi Jones, Rudy Melendez, and Paul Krikorian are for CD2. We'd also like to invite Adrian Nazarian, Adrian Nazarian and uh, his lovely challengers, and all of the others in our local district. Now, we have, we're going to be coming out. We're going to have a library event. We have multiple dates available to include everybody. We don't want anyone to feel like they can say, I'm too busy on that night, or it's Shabbos. I know Koretz doesn't like to attend debates on the High Holy Days or anything like that. I don't, I don't disagree. So thank you for that, and we look forward to responding. Thank you, Mr. Previn. Madam Clerk, let's go ahead and close on the multiple speaker cards. Let's move on on voting on items 14 through 17. Let's open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Now let's vote on items 29 through 32. Let's open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Now let's vote on item 33 and 34. Let's open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Madam President, there's a request to send 33 and 34 forthwith. Without objection, that would be the order. Now let's vote on item 36. Let's open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Antonia Ramirez, are you here? Ms. Ramirez, you're only speaking on item 35 and 37 in your general public comment. I'm going to remind you to please stay on the items that you signed up to speak on, okay? Don't I always. 35, 35. and 37. Um, Pico, uh, the list of citywide special events. I have a wonderful idea. Why don't we put Pico as the place of starting all events, um, primarily on the weekends, instead of doing your events here on downtown LA where it causes gridlock, destruction, and, and utter confusion. Uh, why don't we go ahead and send all your events out there to Pico? And that should be a wonderful start, and that should be a great change, rather than hogging and, and tying up downtown LA, the major artery and the major connector to all areas outside of downtown LA. And uh, number 37, now Cedillo and Harris Dawson, establishing Lincoln Heights Industrial Zone Business Improvement. You're not going to improve this area until you get rid of the fucking goddamn gangbangers. Do something constructive. You can't improve the quality of life or the business without getting rid of the criminals. You st if you keep rewarding the criminals, nothing is going to get done. They destroy everything from property da damage to people and, and, and all areas of the, the whole, uh, entire Lincoln Heights is a destruction. It is, it's a gang infested, disgusting, toxic urban blight. And what you should do is get rid of the fucking gang bangers and then clean up. But you can't do it the other way around. It won't work. And, um, I mean, use some common sense, said they. You know the streets, you know the ghetto, you know the gangbangers. Even the president of Mexico has said the crime in Mexico is astronomical. He wanted to be so, honest so with I, the people. I, I Ms. Think Ramirez, we're Ms. Off Ramirez, topic. you're off topic. You can need to get back to the items you signed up on. To my public comments. Okay, give her for one minute. Thank you. Um, it is time to vote these corrupted, freeloading bums, socialists, communists, Democrats, and the elite, satanic, demonic, fucking Zionist Jew Bolsheviks out. For they have created the homeless Holocaust and the third world ghetto open border invasions and the opiate drug theft gang epidemic. And next, two directors will be coming out with two documentary movies. Now, your first director, Steven Spielberg's upcoming movie is called Zionist Jews and the Anti-Semitism Bullshit. It is to quiet the honest critics exposing the Jew kike criminal monopolies and their theft and their satanic underworld. Bravo. And second, Spike Lee's upcoming movie will be niggers who want to niggerize Los Angeles and America by terrorizing with brute force, bullying, violence, mayhem, mob lynching, prostitution, and uh, prostituting white, Latina, Asian and enslaving them in human trafficking and also drugs, gangs, and uh, the destruction of America and reclaim America. All right, Ms. Ramirez, your time is up. Thank you very much.
Members, let's go ahead and vote on items 35 and 37. Let's open the roll. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Let's move on to general public comment. Marco Juarez, are you here? Followed by John Scooter. Scudder, I apologize for that. And Art Cato, somebody here for that name? Mr. Juarez, you have one minute, go ahead. Yeah, good morning, uh, Mary Martinez. Uh, my name is Marco Juarez, I'm here again and again uh, to complain about this Los Angeles Housing Community Investment Department. I complained to the principal, Germán Mendoza, about the corruption, nothing is being done. I complained to Maria, uh, Maria Elena Diaz about the corruption, nothing is being done. This agency, the 64th uh, Laurel Canyon, Suite uh, 6, uh, 610 North Hollywood, is being run by the mafia. That's only one family run this agency, and that's shame on all of you. No one no, wants to do anything to help us. Please help low-income families, disabled Hispanic tenants, uh, stop all the harassment, intimidation, retaliation by this criminal government agency. That's enough is enough. When some of you is going to do something to help us? That's, that's all, all the reduction of services, all the legal increases of rent, Enforces by this criminal management company, uh, sour management company, and this uh, government, man, uh, government agency, Los Angeles Housing Community Investment Department. Please do something. Enough is enough. Shame on all you guys. Thank you, sir. Next speaker. Good morning, sir. Good morning, madam. Before I begin, I just want to make sure that I'm actually on the general topic four times for one minute each. No, no, no. We, you only signed up for general public comment according to our tabs. Correct. And I tried through the kiosk to do it so that I could speak on four different topics. Only get one minute. So, no matter how many times you sign up for general public comment, it's only one minute for general public comment. Oh, well, that throws everything kind of out of whack. Sorry about that. Those are the rules. One minute for general public comment. Okay, John Scudder, United States Marine Corps Disabled Veteran. I'm here once again about the uh, vending law. Uh, Basically, there needs to be an amendment put into the new vending law uh, so the veterans do not have to pay the fee. Our city's license is waived. Our state tax license is waived. And now they want over $900 for that. Also on the street vending law um, with veterans, um, you have not given any parameters in regards to uh, what it takes to exercise on the sidewalk. The city made a law and didn't check with the county because the county health department still is following the old laws. The two don't mesh at all. I've, I've requested meetings with Price. I've requested meetings with the mayor. I've spoken with the Veterans Affairs at the mayor's office. And I still have no calls and no reserves uh, to do business. I used to sell coffee 50 feet from here in Grand Park as a approved vendor. Now with the new law, I'm out of business. I need help. Thank you, sir. Next speaker, R. Cato. Good morning. Good morning. I just want to make sure that everybody received a copy of the uh, uh, flyer that I passed out. Okay, hold on for just a second. Make sure that the, did you give it 30, to one of the sergeants? I submitted 35 copies. Oh, you already submitted them? Yes, I just want to make sure everybody received a copy of it. Okay, then we should have a So there is a flyer us. attached to it that's significant. Also. Very well, you have one minute, ma'am. Okay. Uh, LA City Council voted on February 25, 2015 to designate West Los Angeles as Sawtell Japantown, one of only four Japantowns in the entire U.S. and all within the state of California. The Sawtell Japantown celebration is a two-week annual public community grassroots celebration created in 2018. This is our third year as we celebrate the fifth anniversary of Sato Japantown with 72 merchant promotions and support from 27 other organizations and merchants to bridge the communities together from February 15th to March the 1st. This is a formal request to declare February 25th, 2020 as Sato Japantown Day and honor the fifth anniversary of LA City Council's historic vote. The Booster Club of Japantown Significant North Surrey Elementary School has been instrumental in the creation of this annual celebration. It's unfortunate our request cannot be made to CD11 Mike Bonin's office as our council person has politicized this public grassroots celebration. LA City Council members are personally invited to attend. The birthday bash is Saturday, February 22nd, 1 to 3 p.m. at North Street Elementary School. Invitations were extended to Council President Martinez and to Mayor Garcetti. Thank you very much. And that concludes our general public speakers for today, so let's go ahead and close that. Okay, Madam Clerk, what's next? Council has motions for posting a referral. Members, I'll post it and referred. Members, are there any announcements? Mr. Rue? 
Do you have an announcement, sir? Yeah. Is there anyone else? Ah, oh. yeah. Oh. They're coming out right now. Give me one second. Yeah, you did. Yeah. <laughs> 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 wow. <laughs> Good memory. <laughs> Thank you, Madam President. And um, um, I have a special announcement today, and I want to especially thank, um, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I, I have a special guest today for my announcement. I want to introduce Claire Fox, who many of you know from her amazing work at the Los Angeles Food Policy Council. Yes, let's give her a round of applause. We are honoring her today because we want to make sure she doesn't go away. <laughs> she's yeah, she's not going far. We're honoring her today for her years of service to the people of Los Angeles, but particularly for her nine years of public service and achievement at the Los Angeles Food Policy Council. Claire is a third generation Angelino. She grew up in a working class neighborhood in the Valley and attended LAUSD public schools. It was through her lived experiences that she witnessed firsthand disparities in economic opportunity and in access to food. Um, these experiences drove her commitment to eliminating food deserts, supporting local food producers, and promoting the dignity and rights of all people. Claire served on Mayor Antonio Vidagosa's Food Policy Task Force and fell in love with the work that promotes participatory democracy in local food systems. So, so what she did was, after that task force, she joined the Los Angeles Food Policy Council in 2011 and served as the executive director since 2015. During that time, she has focused on building a movement of good food for all by bringing over 400 organizations and agencies to the table and cultivating collaborative networks. Under her leadership, the LA Food Policy Council has achieved many victories in equitable food access. These victories include universal acceptance of CalFresh at all LA farmers markets, the first countywide urban agricultural program, and the city's first food recovery program, which has already rescued over 4 million pounds of fresh produce for insecure families. I have also had the pleasure of working with Claire over the past few years in hosting Food Day LA here in City Hall, and I know all of you have participated in that. Claire has proven herself to be an innovative thinker, an incredible advocate for social justice, and we are truly grateful for her leadership and her dedication. So please join me in commending Claire for her incredible work and thanking her for her commitment to Angelinos. Uh, Mr. Ru, we've got two members on the queue, yeah. Mr. Price and Mr. Corex. Thank you, uh, Madam President. Uh, Councilman Ru, thank you for bringing this extraordinary uh, Angelino to us today as we uh, bid her fair due, but also know that she's going to be continuing on uh, to, to serve the people of, uh, of our community. Uh, Claire, we've worked uh, on so many projects and policies together uh, over the past uh, couple of years, the Urban Agricultural Incentive Zones, which we were very happy to actually pioneer in CD9. Uh, references have been made to the Healthy Neighborhood Market Program, uh, and uh, I know you've had projects in many uh, districts, including the 9th District, and it's been a really important groundbreaking program. Um, the uh, sidewalks bending, uh, you were also a strong proponent, uh, making sure there was a healthy food component in that policy, so we're happy that's, that's moving forward. Um, and of course, the um, uh, Economic Development Committee today is going to be taking up the Good Food Zone policy. Uh, again, something you and your organization have championed for a long uh, time, and we're glad that it's here. Uh, so we're just happy to, uh, to know your, of your commitment to this community, uh, happy that so many people have the opportunity to benefit uh, from, your, uh, from your commitment, especially those in underserved areas, food desert areas uh, specifically. 
And so we're going to be happy uh, to know that in your next, uh, the next chapter in your life, you and, and Reverend Eddie uh, are going to be uh, on the scene. You know, your dad and other family members are here as well. And so we're just so proud to celebrate with you uh, on, uh, on your achievements. And we look forward to a continuing relationship that benefits not only the people of, uh, of, uh, of our city, uh, but of our state and our country. Congratulations. Keep up the good work. Mr. Caress? Is this working? Yeah, now it is. Um, that designed and rolled out the 2011 good, good Food Purchasing Program that in 2018 won the city and the Food Policy Council the award from the Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations. You heard about her many legislative successes as executive director of the LA Food Policy Council from Council Member Rue. Um, she's also a proud founding member of the LA Street Vendor Coalition and accompanied street vendor leaders in their long fight for legalization. She has so many talents that have improved the city that we all love. One of my staffers was fortunate enough to benefit from her skills as a facilitator and trainer for the California Conference for Equity and Justice Racial Healing Justice Program. Using those same skills, she co-facilitated a climate justice summit coordinated by my office and the LEAP LA Coalition, a summit which led directly to the creation of the Office of Climate Emergency Mobilization. And for that, I am and will be eternally grateful. You may note that I said co-facilitated. I also want to note that the climate, climate Justice Weekend was instrumental in Claire working with for the first time and then falling for it, the man that is now her fiance, uh, Reverend Eddie. Uh, why don't you stand up and uh, take a, a round of applause. I know that you'll join me in uh, wishing them well at their wedding in a few months and for a happy and prosperous uh, life together going forward. Congratulations and thank you, Claire, for your strong leadership in food equality and racial healing. For all the gifts I know you'll continue to uh, provide as Vice President of Strategic Partnerships at every table and especially to the communities of our, of our great city. You'll be missed greatly by me, by Andy Schrader on my staff who worked with you on, on several projects, and by our whole city family. Thank you so much for everything you've done for us. Thank you, Mr. Correct. And Claire, I think you're just, you know, I think the world of you. You're just absolutely wonderful. From the minute I met you, I knew that your heart was in the right place. And we worked on a, a bunch of policy together. But most importantly, your passion for communities of color and making sure that they have healthy options in their neighborhoods. That is something that I will never, ever, ever forget and, and will be eternally grateful to you for making sure that everyone participates and equity is just as important when it comes to food and the environment. So congratulations. I didn't know you were getting married. <laughs> When's the wedding? March 21st. Okay. Congratulations to both of you. Uh, best wishes on your future endeavor. Who's going to be replacing you on the um, Food Policy Council? Yet. We don't know We're yet. We're searching. Okay. It's an open position. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Rue. Uh, actually, can I have Clara say a few words? Yes, of course. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Thank you all, council members. I've never spoken from here before. This is new. <laughs> um, I wanted to share a quote from food sovereignty activist Vandana Shiva. She said, when you do good things for the earth, she gives you great company. And um, you all and your staff have been great company to me and to all of us at the LA Food Policy Council. As was mentioned, I, I became involved with the Food Policy Council a decade ago when it was still a project of Mayor Viragosa's office. Um, so if you would indulge me a few memories, many of which you are involved in. Um, I was around in 2011 for the very first food day here led by then council member Eric Garcetti. I think there was a handful of people, and now we regularly bring out 300 people to Food Day, which is an incredible uh, growth. And I was around also when then school board member Nuri Martinez and her colleague Steve Zimmer made history at LA Unified School District with the passage of the Good Food Purchasing Policy, which was swiftly followed by council action with council member Coretz here at City Hall. Um, and now this is a national program in 18 cities, and, and it received an award from the UN. So it's an incredible, incredible amount of growth. 
I was also here when we were laughed out of rooms in this building and many other buildings when we talked about this idea of legalizing street vending. And this year, the city launches its street vendor program, thanks to the leadership of Council Member Price and Huisar. I have a very fond memory of uh, standing outside on the steps in 2016, the day that the city made, uh, made sure that all low-income residents would be able to use their CalFresh or EBT at LA's farmers markets. And I was really proud that day to stand alongside the mayor and council member Huisar and also then public works commissioner Monica Rodriguez. That was a special day. That year we went from 30% of farmers markets accepting EBT to close to 100% of farmers markets accepting EBT. Um, I was also there uh, and I presented to our first formal progress report um, to um, for on the newly independent LA Food Policy Council, uh, which was a report called forward by Council Member Mitch O'Farrell, who's not here today, um, but he was the chair of the Arts, Parks, Health, etc. committee, and that was a really <laughs> that was a really pivotal moment for our organization when we became independent. So I appreciate him for that, and I'll always remember uh, very well fighting to save some CRA investments in mom and pop corner store conversions when I met the new councilman in the new ninth, who said he was willing to help. And that very next year, Council Member Price spoke at one of the LA Food Policy Council's first corner store projects, which is Alba Snacks and Services in the 9th District. And today, our Healthy Neighborhood Market Network program serves dozens of small businesses every year. And Councilman, you literally had just taken office. I think you gave me your personal email because you didn't have business cards yet. And I thought that was really cool. So thank you for that. Um, it was an honor to honor Council Member Harris Dawson at our Good Food Gala in 2016 on the precipice of him taking office for teaching us the true meaning of food apartheid and the conditions in South LA and of course to later celebrate the victory of Hank's Mini Market. Um, and I'll never forget a very special Embrace LA dinner where I was seated next, I was surprised to be seated next to then Council President Herb Wesson and we had a lot of amazing conversations that night. And of course, I'll always remember what it took to get the edible parkways ordinance done after Ron Finley's TED Talk went viral. Um, and of course, last but not least, we've celebrated so many successful food days thanks to the leadership of Council Member Rue. Um, and that really built our movement and our momentum. But most importantly, we've taken some important stances to defend SNAP and to ensure food security for the most vulnerable and low-income families here in LA. Many, many memories over the years with all of you, um, but most importantly, I'm just so proud to have worked with all of you to make tangible change in this city. It's been a true honor to serve as the executive director of the LA Food Policy Council, and you can expect to see me around as I continue to work on food equity in the city uh, now at every table. And thank you so much for this recognition. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Claire. Yes. Mr. Rue, I just want to know for everyone, you look really good on this side of the horseshoe. <laughs> Watch out, Mr. Rue. <laughs> when our council president speaks, listen. <laughs> um, but on behalf of the entire city council, we want to thank you, Claire, for everything you've done and everything you're going to do. And signed by all council members, thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rue. Any other announcements, members? You see none, can we all rise for adjourning motions, please? Can I ask the members of the public to please rise? Are there any adjourning motions, Mr. Blumenfield? Okay, thank you, Madam President. Uh, today, I'd like to ask that we adjourn in the memory of a World War II bomber pilot, Lieutenant Colonel named Elmo Maiden. One of the earliest members and the oldest active members of the group called Wings Over Wendy's. Many of you are familiar, we've honored them here many times. Uh, he became very active starting in 2004 and supported every event, uh, including being part of the Conversation with Heroes. 
where he goes out and he speaks to schools throughout the West San Fernando Valley about World War II and about the importance of serving and sacrifice and patriotism. He was one of the greatest generation, one of the few that we had left, and he fought to secure our nation's freedom. He passed away after a short illness at the age of a hundred and a half, uh, just, just this month, and he leaves a legacy of courage for his family and community to carry forward. I actually had just honored him recently for his hundredth birthday uh, last July during the 17th anniversary of the Wings Over Wendy's, and I had the chance to, to really have a good conversation and thank him for his service to our country. Uh, I want to share a special story about Elmo, and, and if you know him, this is a story you know. In 1944, he miraculously landed his B-24 safely with no casualties. After all of the engines died on the plane, there wasn't much hope, uh, including the main engines and the starboard engines. He somehow figured out how to land safely in a French field and save the lives of all of the men who were on board. Uh, there was a British soldier that was there at the moment and he was able to capture that photo and you can see it uh, at the American Air Museum in Britain and it's the story of, of many a folklore. Uh, even in a near death moment, Elmo was cool and collected. That was who he is, an incredible pilot who was proud to serve his country to the end. His son and daughter would reflect on their father's patriotism and remember how his flag would proudly wave in the wind over his, uh, over his home 24-7. Uh, it was up there so long that it started to come loose. And even at his uh, century-old age, he climbed up that pole to secure it to his house. That's how much this country meant to him. Fortunately, that's not how he passed. <laughs> um, his daughter reflects, my dad was generous, kind, and a loving man with a big heart. He was the best father. He flew 35 combat missions throughout World War II and had a deep respect for his friends and comrades who never made it home. He was loved throughout the West Valley by Wings Over Wendy's, his family, and his entire community. Uh, he helped secure the freedoms that we all enjoy today. May he rest in peace, and may we remember him for his service. Thank you, Mr. Bloomfield. Are there adjourning motions? Mr. Lee? Add me to the, the adjourning motion. Add Mr. Lee to the adjourning motion. Any other adjourning motions, members? Seeing none, our meeting is adjourned. Thank you.